Let's jump into today's ADP discussion right at the top. Old El- Odell Beckham Jr. the third is uh, holding it down at the one spot right now. Last time we checked in in February, he was at the one spot. Then he had two months of at the two spot. Now he's back up to the one spot in the June ADP. Um, I guess really the question is, is why? Like, I know a lot of people want to make the argument is, you know, argument to drafting like one of these higher end wide receivers over one of these running backs is that there's less of these big dominant, not in size, but dominant in amount of volume and catches. Um, so they're, they're now maybe more valuable, but I mean, the only way I can see it is that these top running backs score 50 to a hundred points more than any of these wide receivers on pretty much any of their best years. So I like, while I can't necessarily be too upset that you want to take the, the receiver, if that's what you like, I, you know, the 50 points and that's an advantage, right? Sure. Sure. For as long as it lasts, right? Like, that's the, I guess probably the idea in the dynasty is that the wide receiver you're going to have for more years on your squad than you will the running back. Just the average of career span sure. in, in the NFL. Yeah, and you know a lot of people talk about your two to three where year windows and you know whether you're going to draft for win now or you're going to productively struggle the first year or two and get a bunch of young guys and hope that you hit on half of them and have a really solid team. But like a, a guy like Odell, he doesn't turn 26 until November. Uh, so you'll be halfway through the season before he turns even 26. He's got the best resume to this point in his career of the history of the NFL. But just what Casey said, uh, t- in 2016, Odell Beckham has a monster year, 100 catches, 1,370 yards for 10 touchdowns, and two running backs average five more points every week than him. Right. You know, Le'Veon Bell and David Johnson average five more points every single week than Odell's monster performances. There's your advantage. At not least, to at mention, least five more points. Not to mention the advantage, you know, and it's not quite as much of a positional scarcity as it was a few years ago. Sure, we've had a ton of running back ta- of talent enter the league, and and you know some of the coaching schemes and everything with the PPR and and the Duke Johnsons and Christian McCaffrey's of the world. You got people, you got running backs that can get in there and score some points for your team. But those top in monster stud running backs the the david johnson's the zico elliott's the Le'Veon bell and the and the todd Gurley's, to be quite frank with the potential of saquon also being there and maybe saquon joining joins, that maybe force. maybe saquon joins that force this year a lot of people are hoping so um obviously not De- cowboys and eagles and redskins fans but those guys that get the catches the rushes the touchdowns they get so many more points than even the best wide receivers every week and it's just it's a positional advantage for your roster for your fantasy football team to have that you'd much be you'd be better off to have Gurley in your lineup every week as a running back than Odell Beckham as ever as a wide receiver right. and yes that that top end running back moves around but look at a Le'Veon Bell like you said last week or you quoted the Colin Cowherd conversation yeah. with Le'Veon every year Le'Veon Bell is Le'Veon and who else is Le'Veon it's doing his thing Did Gurley he, and David David Johnson hurt his wrist Gurley had to deal with Jeff Fisher but now he's got Sean McVay so Gurley's up there and he's not going anywhere except for injury Le'Veon Bell's not going anywhere except for injury David Johnson had broke his wrist but he's already said I'm going for a thousand and a thousand again passing and rushing and he hurt his wrong arm so his legs are okay yeah you know and I just feel like that's Zeke that's Elliott's the case. gonna get a ton of volume yeah. with the one of the best offensive lines and probably big Coe's big on on zeke catching the ball a lot this year even if he just catches it an average amount 40 40 catches or something like that with all the volume that he's going to see and the the talent that he has to go along with the offensive line that he has he's also going to be very productive absolutely on a week-to-week standpoint and it's just like to just reiterate what you were saying like in 2016 dj has 408 points with 25 points a game Le'Veon misses three games. He has 317 uh, total points and averages 26.5 a game. And then Odell, that's his full season, his only full season on record. Um, he averaged, he had 300 points and averaged 18.7. So to just right. give you the actual numbers with that, with that kind of stuff to it. And then Gurley this year, if obviously Odell missed, but Gurley had 388 points with 25.5 a game. Like Bell was 22.7 a game, 340 points. 
like so that's a 50 to 70 to 80 to 100 point swing on some of these things exactly that, that just to me that's an advantage i don't care if you're talking about the longevity of this player like i can understand that re that logic to a point but i'm trying to win exactly that's the, the well, end goal is to win i'll deal with the running back after he goes right i'll just well, we'll have that. We had the same exact conversation last year, trying to well, after the Dar David Johnson season, and we, we obviously David Johnson got hurt in week one, but and he was crushing it in the first half of that game with his catches, and he was on pace, doing it all over again. We had the same conversation, so I'm not going to repeat myself again now. But the one thing, like you said, you can build to you, you can build around wide receivers, and obviously that was the thing to do a couple years ago, and there's nothing wrong with that. But like Casey said, you want to try. What's wrong with trying to win and have a guy like Gurley or David Johnson or Zeke or Le'Veon Bell for the next three to four years? Be in most of my dynasty leagues, they look nothing like they did three years ago. Like my teams, you know what right. I mean? The teams that I have, uh, Jay, Jay, you're wheeling and dealing, right? Over there. Well, that's what I that's, I like to do that. But I'm like, if you if you draft it, one of those running backs, you're you're saying it not necessarily in the like the players who you have. It's the positions that you now a little focus on more heavily than you're not just saying, Oh, I don't recognize this roster because well, no, I was, I was actually some of my teams. I don't even recognize a roster from when I drafted them. I was saying that, but you're right. You're the positional focus. You get, you have to realize that just because it's your first pick in the dynasty, just, the upper end of this, you, you have a chance to have a, just an every week advantage by getting one of those right. top running backs. And if you take one and you're like, Hey, I, you know, I, I miss having Odell. You could get Odell plus anytime you want. For nobody's going to get you. You're nobody's going to not trade you for Gurley right now. Yeah, or David Johnson last year for sure. You know, or yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, and and when I said you know the the I'm I'm thinking I'm trying to get into the minds of these guys that are making this ADP up, which is a bunch of different people, probably a bunch of experts in the league in, in the industry, quote unquote, that that compile this this data. Uh, that, that do the mocking to make this ADP, right? I, I bet you that none of them, most of them, are probably not playing for very much money. If you took um, ADP from guys that are just in decently sized money leagues, I guarantee the running backs should be up higher because, like you just said, you're trying, trying to, win, to win now. Right. And if you're playing for a fair amount of money, then you want to win now. There's no preparing for the future you want to win now and if you want to win now you right. got to take these start top preparing. end upper echelon running backs as yeah. as much as you can in that top of the first round you it, start preparing for the future when you've had your team for a little while and you can see that the wheels are spinning and then right. you start preparing for the future other than that i'm going for the victory every single year that's how i'm drafting my team and then on top of that like just to add more to the points per game and the like just 40 points more on just let's just say that was the average that these four running backs are scoring over those receivers like 40 50 points sprinkled over the 14 games to get you into the playoffs those are dubs that's an advantage again yeah. like, well and it's, it's harder to find the running back points than it is the wide receivers but to double down on what jay just said i'm in one of ryan mcdowell's super flex mocks right now and i've made his pick or two that i'd just to see, because it is—it's a mock draft. Mm -hmm. I know, and see, obviously Ryan McDowell puts in tons of work, and he's a beast at this data data collection. He does this for our industry, and it's freaking awesome. Yeah. But like everybody in that room is doing a mock draft, so we're kind of tweaking what we might do with our strategies to see what would have happened, mm -hmm. what will happen. You know. So I was just telling Casey on the phone today about how some of the picks I've made in this mock draft, and I like what I got going on. But there's you definitely telling Ryan that you're not taking it seriously here. You're playing no, I'm, def I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely taking it seriously. But there's probably a pick or two that if you had a gun to my head and it was a two hundred and fifty dollar league, then I might would have right. made a take safer. Jarvis Landry, I then. might would have made a safer money in my pocket pick instead of hey, let me take this guy and see what happens to the rest of the room. Yeah, you know, and see what, who's on the board my next pick. Yeah, for sure.